The last time we took a look at the pain-inducing game series that is Army Man, we discovered 3DO had a formula that they really liked, and for the most part, they stuck with it. And the times they didn't, whoo boy. But they did have their hand in a different cookie jar as well. Aerial Combat, in which they released a handful of games under the names Air Combat and Air Attack. These games focused on you piloting a few types of helicopters in order to accomplish missions. Stuff like Fetch Quest, Pick Up X Amount of This Item, Base Defense, and Base Opposite of Defense. But I hear you ask, are they any good? Did you not watch part one? Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the helicopter stays airborne by itself. You don't have to move it up and down. The D-pad moves forward and back and strafes left and right, and you turn using L1 and R1. I would have preferred turning using the right stick and moving with the left stick, but I guess they were compensating for if someone doesn't have a dual shock. You get a pass, 3DO, but I just got started. One thing I noticed is that some larger things, like the enemy bases and the spawn points, take a ridiculous amount of hits. You'll use up all your secondary weapons just trying to destroy those. Oh yeah, the secondaries. You got missiles, you got guided missiles. The guided missiles kind of suck because they seem to do a little less damage and they're slow to fire. It makes me think of the homing missiles from Twisted Metal. Yeah, the homing is nice, but it barely makes a dent. You've got napalm. Yeah, how about a little napalm death? You suffer, but why, bitch? My favorite weapon is this thing you shoot that makes a couple of paratroopers with bombs strapped to them come down and commit Suzuki on the enemies. Dude, he just got ripped up by the blades. That is so metal. You have a crane you can use to pick up items and other stuff in the game. Like in one level, there's a bunch of ants that you can lead to the tan bases to fight the enemies by hauling a donut into their base for them to eat. While this game thought of making ants your friend even before Half-Life 2 did. You can choose different pilots who apparently give buffs to certain secondaries. Like one of them makes the guided missiles shoot faster and now they don't suck as bad. And you can unlock better helicopters as you progress through the game. There's an escort mission you have to do where... Oh! Oh look, it's a uh, 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 Timothy the small locomotive that, that could. And Knuckles. That's all I really had to say about that, but I love how he just freaking disappears at the end. Guys, uh, what if I told you I might actually like this game? Yeah, I actually enjoyed myself while playing this game. N not like that, shut up. The controls are solid, the gameplay's not that bad. Honestly, yeah! If I would've had this game as a git, as a gid? If I'd have got this game as a gid, I could gub this game. Ah, okay. The game is good. That's what I'm trying to say. We finally did it. We found the good Army Men game. And you know what? It's got a sequel, Air Attack 2. And you know what? It's the same shit, but even better. You want to know how it's better? Because Jim Cummings voices a Jamaican guy. Ooh, that was one grandmother of a hailstorm. Hey, man. Rene, man. Pokemon. I don't give a fuck. But yeah, Air Attack 2 is literally the same game with Jim Cummings and more maps. And there's a PS2 version if you want better graphics. There was apparently a PC version of Air Attack, but I couldn't find it. Maybe it'll pop up on Steam one day like the RTS games did, which apparently some of you really like. I read the comment section. I did play Army Men RTS on PS2, which was the last one and featured the Sarge characters. I don't really have much to say about it. It's a real-time strategy game, and it's a solid one. I had fun playing it. Also, the guy doing the tutorial sounds like Principal Skinner. It's important to learn the strengths and weaknesses of each one. Or you could just hurl them blindly at the enemy. That's what most people do. Don't press the select button. It does nothing. Do not ever go near the select button. Well, now I have to. I wasn't going to until you told me not to. What you've just done can never be taken back. Well, hell, now I feel bad. All my life would have been so much different had I never pressed that fucking button. You know what else has changed my life for the worst? Playing the handheld Army Man games. Yes, I played them all. Air Combat, Army Man 1 and 2, and Sarge's Heroes 2. And in typical 3DO passion, fashion? Passion fashion. They are all the same exact game recycled into a different one. A dull, lifeless, isometric pile of pixelated vomit it's so vile, you would have thought Drew Pickles ate it, shat it out, and ate it again over and over. That is exactly what I did. And if you think that is sick and disgusting, wait till you see what I have in store for the Game Boy Advance Army Men games. It is like I took my semen and then fertilized the eggs of a diseased radioactive gum monster that lives inside my bowels. 
My novels then gave me sons and their names were Army Men Advance, Army Men Turf Wars, Army Men Operation Green. These games are all the true definition of shuttleware. A waste of data. And their ROMs take up valuable space on the internet that could be used for more pictures of my 300 mile long penis. These games are pieces of shit with absolutely no entertainment value whatsoever. Quite like Group Pickles videos themselves. Now, if you will excuse. I have a fourth wall to break and shut up my ass which will end up sounding like something along the lines of Thank you Drew Pickles for scaring all my subscribers away. Anyway, Operation Green was the one I just could not stomach. It's everything I hate about GBA shovelware. Isometric? Check. Horrible sound quality that feels like someone stuck a drill in your ear? check a -roni. Sluggish movement speed? check a -mundo. Only thing it doesn't have is a movie license. Then it would be the perfect GBA shovelware. And I'm not gonna rag on the graphics either, because honestly, I've seen way worse when it comes to GBA graphics. Remember that monster truck game? Oh, mama. I didn't even get past the first level on this one because I couldn't figure out where in the Sam hell I'm supposed to go. And honestly, after half an hour of aimless running, I tapped out. Turf Wars is the same idea, but executed differently. I actually got through a few levels. Not that it was much better. The music is hilarious though. It does not go with the game at all. Honestly, I can't think of anything this music would be fitting for. Tell you what, play it at my funeral. Army Men Advance almost feels like it wasn't an Army Man game to begin with. It's like zombies ate my Army Men or something. The art style and the way the Army Men sprites look look nothing like the rest of the games. This one's top down instead of isometric, by the way. And you know how I like my GBA games, just like my women top down. To tell you the truth, the game wasn't all that bad. It just, you know, you get that feeling in your head like, you know, I could be playing literally any other game right now than Army Men on the Game Boy fucking Advance. There are way more important things I could be doing with my time, like doing my taxes, cleaning my house, commissioning an artist to draw my rant sona as a girl. Hey, yo. Artists, hit me up. Well, that's all the handheld shit. We're actually knocking these out pretty quick. In 2003, 3DO would file Chapter 11 bankruptcy and lay off their employees without pay. Treated your workers like shit all the way to the end, eh, Trippy? After that, the Army Men series would be sold off to a company called Global Star Software that would continue releasing the games in the series, including the very last Army Men game 3DO worked on before it shut down, Sarge's War, which ironically was supposed to be the last game in the Sarge universe. It was released on the GameCube and the Xbox, and we're gonna play it on my modded Xbox with every fucking American release on the hard drive. Yeah, buddy, bet you wish you had one of these. Well, this certainly ain't the cartoony comedic army man I know and don't love, and Jim Cummings is nowhere to be found. This is a gritty reboot. They pulled a DMC on us. This game is trying to be serious. How serious? How about every major character other than Sarge fucking dies all in one cutscene. Vicky. <laughs> I love you, Sarge. I'm sorry. <laughs> 3DO, please. This is why you went bankrupt. It's the sixth fucking generation and you're still doing tank controls. You're not Silent Hill. You can't just say it's part of the atmosphere. By the way, did you know that they put Silent Hill 2 on the Xbox and it goes for cheaper than the PS2 version? And it has an extra game mode the PS2 version doesn't have? And it's way better than that shitty version on the 360? Get it. Backward compatibility is a thing that exists. Back to your scheduled program. How about them graphics, huh? Look at the graphics, 
are awesome. Looks more like Medal of Honor than it does an Army Men game. Why, yes, Sarge does have a gigantic hole in his back. As your health drains, you lose pieces of plastic. That's a neat little touch. And you know how I like touches, said Michael Jackson. So the whole game is just an update on the Sarge's Heroes formula, except now you have some light puzzle solving. If you can call looking for bombs to blow up walls that are clearly marked as blow upable walls as a puzzle. Yes, I said blow upable. And I'll say it again blow upable. Nice little secret room. I don't like the way he said that. In fact, I don't care for Sarge's voice in this at all. Time to inflict some serious pain of my own. I have to make it back to the portal and find Malice. I was a plastic toy. Funny as hell, I was in the most mediocre game you could think of. You know, I kid, but would you believe this game actually isn't that bad? It's surprising. Like, 3DO was finally getting an idea on how to make a third-person shooter and went bankrupt while making it. So other than this game, we'll never know if things would have gotten better from there. So anyway, you basically have a couple of primary missions you have to complete, most of which have to do with point A to point B. And then you have secondary missions that you don't actually have to do, and I don't know of any reason to. You get some decent guns. You have one with infinite ammo that shoots really slow and is more of a last resort gun. And then you have an assault rifle that, despite the name, is semi-auto, so you have to hit the fire button for every shot. The shotgun is really good and is satisfying to shoot. Boom! Even though this game has tank controls, they feel really responsive and your movement speed is pretty much perfect, not too fast or slow. The maps are pretty well thought out. Hell, I'm gonna say it, I like this game. What is this Twilight Zone shit where the gritty reboot is the good game? But you know what? This is a 3DO game, so trust me, I'll find some imperfections. Like right here, where I'm clearly headshotting this guy and the collision detection is saying, ha ha, fuck you. I had to haul my ass down the back roads, get up on this little bridge thing, and then take him out with my rifle. I don't know if this was a glitch or the game coded it in such a way that I can't kill him unless I do it like that. Also, despite the fact that I like this game for the most part, there is one point where I absolutely despise the game. There's this one level that's supposed to be like a basement or a pantry. I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to be. But the map was so confusing, I just ran around aimlessly trying to figure out where the hell I was supposed to go half the time. And when I did finally find the goal at the end of the level, Level, I found out that I was supposed to have a bomb there to blow up a wall and that bomb was all the way back almost where I started and it was at that point I decided it was time for a break. So it wasn't really the game's fault, it was my fault for not finding the bomb. I'm not gonna sit here and blame the game for my own stupidity like some people do. <coughs> Would you believe we've only got two games left? And this is where we tread some dangerous waters. Now we see what happens to Army Men after 3DO. Army Men Major Malfunction on the Xbox and PlayStation 2. Developed by Team 17, the same people that made the Worms games. So maybe this will be good? The Tan Army is no longer a thing. Now you're going up against Lego Men, Toy Robots, G.I. Joes, and the biggest enemy of all, the controls. There's areas where the camera camera and the controls can't agree on each other, so right in the middle of moving forward, your controller will decide you're trying to move in a different direction because the camera is moving. Uh, okay, so, uh, this is embarrassing. My review just had a major malfunction. The rest of the footage I recorded for this game was corrupted. So literally, the only footage I have of this game is the first two levels. So, I'll just sum it up real quick. The lock-on sucks and it's the only way to shoot. The tank controls kill you sometimes. Also, the voice clips are annoying because they tried to do that Banjo-Kazooie thing where they talk in gibberish. Yeah, have fun listening to that. I wanted to shoot my speakers every time I heard that. So, next one. In fact, last one. This is the last Army Men game ever made, and they never made any more after this. And after you see this game, you will understand why. It's a Wii shovelware game! Woo!
Look at it, people. Look and be amazed. And would you believe the very last game in the Army Men franchise still had tank controls? They started with it. They ended with it. They were dead set on it. You don't even play an Army Man in this game. You play some kid pretending to play Army Men in his room. It was obvious this game was made for small children. This is one of those games that your relative who barely knows you but wants to get brownie points with the family for thinking about others gets you on Christmas because it was like $5 and kids like video games, right? The game has like a handful of maps, but it tries to make up for that by having a whole bunch of missions that you do on those same maps. Kind of like what MGS5 tried to do. <laughs> Even though the game gives you a cursor, you don't actually start hitting your enemies until the cursor turns red. Like here I am further away shooting at that same enemy and the Wii is like, uh -huh, no. You know, I've kept quiet about it for the most part, but this is the most the series has ever blatantly ripped off Toy Story. And I do feel like this game would have been a whole lot better if they would have actually used Silicon Graphics computers and given the protagonist breast cancer. And this is where the army men's story ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Global Star would get bought out by Take-Two Interactive and get rebranded 2K Play. So now Take-Two owns the rights to the series, and if you look on Steam, 2K is shown as the publisher of the games. There has been no attempts to revive the Army Men franchise at any point in time, and maybe that's for the best. There has been attempts by indie developers to make similar games under different names, but nothing has really gotten major attention. There's also a game called Rising Storm 2 Vietnam that has an Army Men expansion. So the question question is, will we ever see army men again? How the fuck should I know? <laughs> what? They did make another army men game? Let me see. Oh no, it's a mobile game! Oh no, army men, you did not deserve this. Wait a minute, what? Mega Man was in it? And Marco from Metal Slug? What the fuck? Dude, my head right now, holy shit. Yes, this is 100% real. And it's the sponsor of today's video. No, God, no. Have I taught you nothing about mobile games? Don't play this. Well, that's a thing that existed. I'm gonna end this video now. Bye. Oh, <laughs>